show, everybody. I'm so, so, so glad that you guys are here with us. My name is David. And my name is Jake. And today is a very special day. We are celebrating <gasps> Easter! Yes, Easter. It's different. It's different. Yeah, we're not hanging out in church today, which is kind of a bummer. Mm. Yeah. But we're hanging out as a body of Christ in our homes and having a blast here today. That's right. So make sure that you guys check it out because if you've ever wondered how many peeps Jake and I can put in our mouths, you're about to find out. Here we go. Ready? <laughs> da, da, da. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Pictionary. We got junior high versus high school. Let's win. go age before beauty. Oh. You just called us ugly. So Anyways. I guess we'll go first. Do you want to go first or should I go first? Uh, you go first. All right, here we go. Because I'm nervous. All right, I am not good. I took two years of art class, but that's not going to show up on this whiteboard. Two years so. of art class? I Don't did. look, Nathaniel. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did you do two years? Two years of art class or two classes? Two years. Okay. That. Wait. What? Ready? What? Time I am apart? ready. And start. Stifle Tower. No, I don't know. <laughs> A kebab. Oh. What? That's a good guess. Cotton candy. Uh, it's on, is, what is this? Is that on fire? Ten seconds left. <laughs> is it? What? Two, one, you're done. Oh, no, dang it, it was a chandelier. Oh. <laughs> oh. So, it's my turn, here we go, let's see what we All got. Right. That was too oh, high for me. I have to I, guess. I, I, <laughs> ready? Oh, he's, yeah. I am ready. And go. A house. A church. Church. Um, person. Uh, church person, pastor. Pastor J.O. Um, Superman. <laughs> Um, Super Church, Mega Church, uh, Superman, King Clark, um, it's okay. <laughs> um, Super Bible, uh, Preacher, um, Preacher, Preacher, and you're preacher done. Church Man, Jake. Why <laughs> <laughs> Superman? I was Superman, Superman in the first place. Oh, yeah. I wasn't there. Hey, okay, Nathaniel, make us proud. We can do this. Here we go. So we're all winning. So we're all winning. We're terrible at this. Yeah, we're yeah. So we're going the first team that gets two correct. Yep. Okay. Ready? You just, you don't have, okay, yep. I'm just gonna, yep. <laughs> I'm just gonna do it. Okay, all right, ready? Cool. Go. All right, all right. <laughs> okay, a person sticks in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a child. My child, Scarlett. David's child. Uh, a kid with a yo-yo. A kid who is... Oh, uh, uh, what else one. do I do? Eye level. Uh, a warrior. <laughs> Pizza man. And you're done. It's David. Oh. <laughs> I didn't know how to do that, David, so I figured I would do Bible David. I should have drew a Mustang for Jake. Okay. We can do... It's kind of fitting we had them back to back. All right, ready, Bob? Yeah. Okay, go. Soda can. Uh, toilet paper. Yeah. No! Yes! 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 Come on! Woo! Wow. Wow. You did that. Yes. Papa, you All right. 12 seconds. Yeah. One for junior high. Yeah, lucky guy. Woo! Right. Uh, just one more. One more, and we win. All right. Here we go, Nathaniel. All right. All right. All right. I'll do better this time, I promise. Can you live up to that promise? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> All right. Ones. Okay. Ready? Go. Uh. Um. Jake. <laughs> Why is that person have a weird mustache? Is it me? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> uh. Oh. uh What's okay. happening right now? <laughs> <laughs> Two years of art classes. <laughs> <laughs> you might want a refund. <laughs> Mario. Super Mario. Super Mario Bros. Yes! <laughs> oh, you barely got it. <laughs> Woo! Here we go. Wait, I thought you could well write letters on a Pictionary. Uh, that's fine. 
<laughs> I mean, that's like one of the biggest rules, you know? Alright, one to one. Next point yeah. wins this. No. Alright, ready? Yep. Go. David, I can't see over there. SpongeBob. You got it, he's so mad. Uh, receipts. Um, <laughs> essay. Um, oh, is it now at home now? Uh, Shelter Co. McDonald's. Uh, <laughs> what? I don't know. What about this is McDonald's? I'm just, I'm just That's straight. all I got. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's all I got. I made I, it, and I don't even know Peter, what it is. Playbill. Um, Five. What is this? The ocean, a pool. And um, you're done. Shelter Co. It's a meme. <laughs> what? There's text above it with the picture below it. Whatever. It's back to you. All right, here we go. This could be it. Nathaniel, make sure that you stand right in the way of the camera so they can't see what you're doing. Okay. <laughs> Okay. All right. Let's bring All this right, home, buddy. David. All right, buddy. Did you just see it, David? No. Ready? Oh, okay. Oh, hi. Go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Well, look over there, Jake. Oh. It's don't pay attention at the whiteboard. Oh. That's not fun. What in the world? Um. Oh, okay. Um, Bubble boy. Jack of the box. Um. I have. Where, where do I go with this one? Um. How Sleeping much time? in bed. Ten seconds. Wow. Sleeping Ten. in. Nine, wow. eight, well, seven, <laughs> six, getting up right. for breakfast. Five. Three, two, I don't even know. One. Coming through the door. And Coming through the yes. door. A mirror. But like oh. I didn't know. Oh. Can I go? Yes. Oh wow. Go. Somebody's ready. Oh gosh, that's a. Nice. 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 I'll just have to imagine what it is. <laughs> Zorby? A Zorby, a beanbag chair. <laughs> nah, dog. <Bye. laughs> a hammock. A hammock. Three, two. Uh, jump rope. Yes. Oh! 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 Yes. Junior oh, high. No. Corona. <laughs> Thanks for watching us make fools of ourselves, and I hope you probably make fun of all our drawings. Plunger. We're gonna move on into our next game segment, so <laughs> stay tuned as we go into Chubby Bunny. Chubby peeps. Chubby peeps. Chubby peeps. Chubby, 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 chubby peeps. <laughs> ba, ba, ba. Here we are doing our next game segment, and it's a game of Chubby Peeps or Chubby Bunny. If many of you guys have played this before, not Chubby Chicks, not Chubby <laughs> Chicks. No, that is not a good game at all. Um, so what we're gonna do? <laughs> what? <laughs> what we're gonna do? <laughs> is we're gonna take three of these to start with, shove them in our mouths, and then Chris is going to give us some tongue twisters, and we're gonna see how far we can get. And keep, once we do one, we shove in another peep, and we'll see who could be as uh, clear as possible with many peeps in our mouth already. Wow, all right. I'm ready. Uh, ready. He's really ready, I gotta, all right. Ready, ready, ready. All right, so David, you wanna go first? Sure. All right, so pick a number one through 50. 35. 35. 11 Benelevin elephants. 11 Benelevin elephants. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's fun yeah, to say. Yeah, no, get, good. Another, get another so, peep. Okay, put another peep in your mouth, bro. Uh, I'll say it first. I mean, 11 Benelevin elephants. 11 Benelevin elephants. <laughs> Take it. <laughs> All right, so who picks a number first now? So Jake, what number did you want? Mm, two. Two, yeah. Okay, I'm. Uh, <laughs> you can read it. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Oh my goodness gracious! What the heck? All right. <laughs> Betty Bopper bought some butter, but she said the butter's bitter. If I put it in my batter, it will make my batter bitter. <laughs> but a bit of better butter will make my batter better. So, twas better. Betty Butter bought a bit of better bubber. Butter. Butter. <laughs> <laughs> My gosh, wow. I'll allow it. All right. Ahem. <clears throat> Betty Butter bought some butter, but she said the butter is bitter. If I put it in my batter, it will make my batter bitter. But a bit of better butter will make my batter better. So twas better Betty's butter bought a bit of better butter. 
<laughs> you added some 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 letters in there, but you started off strong. No, it's okay. You really, it's really go in. <laughs> no, it was pretty good. It was, <laughs> it was great. So you're at how many peeps are you at now, Jake? You're at four. Should be four. Five, I think. No, four. Five. Five. Oh, wow. it's five right Did now. Did you put a new one in your mouth? After that, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. I'm on that. All right. One. So David, it's now your turn to pick a number. Let's go seventeen. Seventeen. Near an ear. A near ear, a near nearly eerie ear. <laughs> you know what? I'm just gonna give you the laptop. Uh, That's probably better. Okay, seventeen. Near an ear, a near ear, a nearly eerie ear. <laughs> all right, all right. I'm actually done. Near an ear, a nearer ear, a nearly eerie ear. Hmm. One more. Bum. Guys are going all right. Jake, you pick a number. All right. Uh, I'll do 27. How are these tasting, Jake? <laughs> yeah, you know. Expired. <laughs> <laughs> they don't taste good. I like the sugar. Yeah. <laughs> Sugar's good. All right. So. We can make that a gift. <laughs> here we go. The sugar if your cheeks are full. <laughs> oh, this is going to be bad. All right. <laughs> Six. Sticky skeletons. Six 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 sticky skeletons. That's a dicey one. How many people are Bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if that pans out. We should. Do we go until like one of us. Cannot say it. Yeah, so even if we tumble a little bit, it's yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. We are, you guys are going pretty great, so maybe right. we should just throw in another peep in right now. Or no. Yeah, make right. this faster. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go two? 42. Oh. Hmm. Hello. Are you chewing it, Jake? No. Three oh. shrunk oh. silk shirts. Oh no. <laughs> pre pre shrunk silk shirt pre shrunk silk <laughs> oh, that's, that's a scary one <laughs> okay I'm <laughs> drooling all over myself. <laughs> all right. Do I throw another one in, David? Three, <laughs> three, three shrunk silk shirts. Three shrunk silk shirts. Three shrunk silk shirts. <laughs> <laughs> David, have you had another one in? Not yet. Okay. Mm. Mm. Wow, jeez. That was significantly more than I thought. Yes. Here we go. All right. I'm going to say number 50. All right. You're on my laptop. <laughs> of all the vids I've ever viewed, I've never viewed a vid as valued as Alex's egg vid vid. What the heck is that? <laughs> Of all the vids I've ever viewed, I've never viewed a vid as valued as Alex's egg bed vid. <laughs> Alright, let's go with number 24. Alright, number 24. So this is the sushi chef. I'm not a tongue twister. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh wait, hold on a second. <laughs> So old. So this is the sushi chef. Okay. Oh, another one. Shoot, man. Golly. All right. What number? Wait, no, there's only 16. five. Sixteen. Sixteen. I don't. I don't know Anyways. how many. Anyways. It's not sixteen. Twelve. I think. I thought there was ten oh, and one. All right. But it's not. It's yeah. You ready for this? There are a lot of people not though. I wish to wash my Irish wristwatch. I wish to wash my Irish wish watch. Oh my god. Well done. One more. Wow. Oh. 
Orders are good in Scotland. How do you think the viewers are going to feel? That, that scene at the end of oh, Wreck-It Ralph 2. But it keeps getting oh, harder. Oh, 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 no, no, no. Oh, oh, no. Oh, 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 cut the video. Oh, cut the video. Hey, FD. Oh. Wait, wait. Kenzie has a great idea. Cut the video. Okay. What? The end of the... <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, that's kind of. Look at that. That's the saddest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Guys, I'm so sorry you had to see that. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Jake is. No, get that away from me. Alright, kiddos. Uh, that was absolutely. Don't <laughs> Ew. I think we'll say I was the clear winner on that one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't think anyone was the winner. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, guys. Maybe, maybe that's the thing. Nobody won on that. But thanks for watching. They are the winners. We're gonna move into our our time and share with you guys a little bit from the Bible. Ah, uh, that was gross. Disgusting. I don't think I ever want to touch or see another peep ever again. Still in my. No, get that out of here. Get that. I see. It. <laughs> our interns are waving it in our faces, and we're not appreciative of that. In my beard still. Oh, oh, guys, um, that was awesome. We're going to continue through our series, though, um, on being anchored. We started this thing off by just kind of giving the basics, where we find joy, peace, and hope in Jesus. And then uh, the next week, we talked about how we abide in Christ, and when we live in Him, we can experience those things. Uh, and, and as we went through, we went on to last week, and we talked about the things that get in the way of us really abiding in Christ. And now uh, we're, we're going to talk about this. And, and it's essentially as we are anchored in our mission. We're gonna, we, want to, we want to talk about today this concept of us knowing exactly why we are doing what we're doing. In the book of Isaiah, we can actually see this uh, pretty well laid out for us. In Isaiah chapter 6, verse 8, it says this, And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am, send me. Isaiah right here very plainly, very clearly shows us our mission. He shows us what it is that we are supposed to do. He says, here I am, send me. Because the bottom line is that God is looking for people who are willing to say yes to him and willing to step out in faith and go do what he's asking us to do. And now we have a reason why we're doing this, right? We have a reason why we're doing this. It's the resurrection. The reason why we're doing this is because of Easter, because of what we're celebrating right here today, because Jesus rose from the dead, we now have this call, this push for us to go out and do something amazing for God. That is what we have to do. And, and if we really have faith that Jesus died on the cross, that he rose from the dead, then our lives should look different. Our lives should be um, exceptionally different than they were before we believed in him. Because mm. faith that doesn't do anything, it, it doesn't mean anything. It's uh, The demons believe in God, right? It says in James. But but if we don't act on that faith, if, if we hear Jesus say, I am the way, the truth, and the life, no one comes to the Father except through me. If we hear that and we have faith in that and we believe that, if we believe that Jesus is the only way to get to God, then our life should look different. The way that we tell people about God should be different. Now there's three parts to this. There's three parts to this, and, and I'm excited as we talk through what these three parts mean and what they look like in our lives. Yeah, and to really like start the foundation of it, um, of those three parts, you have to talk about the mission. And guys, the thing that's so crazy is that, yeah, we're celebrating that Jesus rose from the grave. Like, that can't be celebrated hard enough. Like, it is such a huge deal. No one else has done that on their own ever in our history. Um, and not only did he rise from the grave, but he beat all sin, all evil, and everything that has to do with death. Like, we are free from our old life, and we're given a new life. And in that new life, we transition into kind of like a question of like, okay, now what now? And when you look at when Jesus rose from the dead, he spent some time 
um, living amongst people for a short time here on earth. Like he hung out, he found his disciples. He said, hey, guess what? The grave don't got me. I'm here now. And they got to hang out and teach us, be, te Jesus, excuse me, began to teach them. He began to uh, share with them more of what heaven looked like. And ultimately he, he had to have a time though where he had to eventually go back to heaven. And that's what they call the ascension. And so before Jesus ascends though, he says one last thing to his disciples. Uh, Matthew 28, if you've been in our church before at Shelter Cove, you, you see that it is plastered on our walls. Um, it's called the Great Commission. And it's just about going out and making disciples of all people of all nations and baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, Jesus says something pretty similar to that, but it's a little bit more specific as to kind of what he wants us to do. So in the book of Acts, in chapter one, verse eight, this is right as Jesus is, he's like going off into heaven, he's gonna go back to God the Father. This is what he says to his disciples. He says here in verse eight, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Guys, like that's, in a nutshell, that's our mission. Our mission is to go out and to make disciples and not just make disciples uh, just kind of flippantly and just kind of like, you, you know, not, not with any kind of aim, but Jesus says, look, he's telling his disciples here, start in Jerusalem. When you start in Jerusalem and you do well there, like go out into Judea, then into Samaria, then into the ends of the earth. And you see that there are these circles that Jesus talks about going out into. Uh, and the first one is Jerusalem, the, the hometown of our faith. And when you translate that to us here today, Jesus is saying, look, um, you don't have to go into Timbuktu in the depths of, you know, Africa or Asia or somewhere where no one's ever been um, and be a missionary there. That's not what he's saying. He's saying, look, start in your own backyard. He doesn't say that the disciples go out to the ends of the earth and then come back. He says, start in Jerusalem, start in your hometown, start with your friends, start with your neighbors, start with your family. And guys, that's the same here for us today. Jesus is saying, look, um, I've given you this gospel. I've given you the good news that um, you can be saved by faith in me and that you can have a new life. Now go share that with somebody else. Share that with your family. Share that with your friends. Share that um, with your neighbors. Share that with random people around you when you get the chance. And so for us, you know, for you guys, um, our easiest Jerusalem to think about is really your schools. Think about your middle school, your high school. Um, you have a nucleus of people right there who need Jesus. They desperately need Jesus. And you can be a light to them uh, and go out and share the gospel with them. You don't have to go to the very ends of the earth. You can just start with where you're at right now and then let that kind of grow out from there. Um, but we have to start with uh, the gospel, the message of good news and we have to hold on to that and then share it with others that's our mission and that's what we have to start with and it, and it kind of builds from there we have our mission as the base and then once we know our mission we go into the next part of of this whole thing and it's our method and our mission is constant our mission never stays the same the mission is always jesus the mission is always the message of christ and uh the methods however they are different, right? Uh, obviously, now they're very different. Yeah, Even in the past sure. month, um, the the world has done church differently. Yeah. Um, as as we we were on some Facebook groups with thousands of other youth pastors from around the country, and we we hearing stories about all of the the different things that people are doing, and it's just amazing. Yeah. It's so cool. We have really Instagram is. Live, Facebook Live, Zoom. Um, people are doing things on Twitch. Like, it is so cool to see how the methods that we get across this message of Christ, um, they're they're adapting and evolving uh, based on our circumstances. Uh, who knows what it's going to be in ten years? Maybe it'll be a hologram like Tupac. Or <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but. Paul actually talks about this. Paul talks about this, that, about this in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, and uh, verse 19 is where it starts. Uh, go ahead and turn there with me. It says, For though I am free from all, I have made myself a servant to all, that I might win more of them. To the Jews I became as a Jew, in order to win the Jews. To those under the law I became as one under the law, 
though not being myself under the law, that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, not being outside the law of God, but under the law of Christ, that I might win those outside the law. To the weak, I became weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that by all means I might save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, that I may share with them in its blessings. What Paul is saying here is that we must become what the people need. We must bring the message of Christ, our mission of Christ, in a way that the people that we are bringing that message to must be able to hear and understand and be able to get the life-changing message of Christ. Our mission never changes, but our methods, they are different. And, and what Paul is saying here is that he, do, he has become a servant to all. He does all things for all people so that he might win a few. And, and that kind of, that strikes me as just this servant that he has laid down himself. I mean, he is beheaded and and he gives up everything that he is. He becomes all things for all people so that he might win a few. And I think in our lives, um, we can adapt that same thing is we must be willing to adapt the way that we share the message of Christ to fit the people that we are sharing that message to. Absolutely. And what's cool, guys, is that um, we've been given this mission. Jesus says before he leaves earth, here's your mission. Here's what I am asking you to do. Um, before you come to be with me. Um, and he also have realizes, and we realize, that our methods change. Um, it is so different now in the way we preach and share the gospel now than, and, than four or five weeks ago. Things have totally changed, but um, the, while those methods may have changed, the mission has never uh, changed ever. Uh, and so we continue holding on to that mission and we are flexible and able to move around and, ch and to use different methods. And what that amounts to, guys, is that it, it moves into our third point. It moves into a movement. Now, here's the thing that's really interesting, guys, is that um, when Jesus uh, gives the disciples his last bit of, um, you know, mission, like hoorah, like go out and, you know, it's a little bit of pep talk, um, the disciples didn't really know what to do. So they prayed, they prayed, they prayed, and then on the day of Pentecost, they were, boom, filled up with the Holy Spirit, and they were, boom, sent off. And what was crazy was that on that day, over 3,000 people came to know Jesus and they were baptized. And what that means for us is that ultimately, guys, this is not a lone ranger faith. This is not you and you against the world. Like, that's not how this works. We are part of a bigger movement. We are part of a larger um, movement that's been happening for thousands of years now. And guys, that's how, what Jesus wanted to start. He wanted to start a movement, a group of people to go out, to share his message, to share the gospel, the good news, uh, so that people would come to know Jesus Christ. And then we could become part of that movement. And what's really cool is that uh, in the Bible, it speaks specifically towards that movement, and it, it uses the illustration of a body. And the body, the human body, is so intricate, it's so it's so. Uh, complex and unique amongst anything else in creation. Uh, you can't find anything that's really close to what happens within our own bodies. Um, and what that means, guys, is that every little thing in your body has a function and it has a purpose and it has a job to make the rest of the body work. And so when you look at 1 Corinthians 12, so a couple chapters later, Paul kind of uses that and he shares this uh, out of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 through 14. This is kind of what it looks like to be part of this movement. Chapter, or chapter 12, verse 14 says this, For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in one spirit we were, allowed, we were all baptized, into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and all were made to drink of one spirit. For the body does not consist of one member, but of many. Guys, like this is such a cool illustration because what Paul is saying here is that every believer has a function. Every believer has gifts and abilities to make a body move. When a body moves, um, there's all kinds of different nerve endings and tendons and muscles and 
bones and all these things working together to make our bodies do what they're supposed to do. And that's the same concept that Paul is saying here. He's saying, look, you believer, you Christian, um, you are part of a larger movement. You're part of a larger body. And you have gifts and abilities that benefit that larger body. And God has, has gifted you with those things so that you can go and be a light to other people. Um, some of us are mouths. We're mouthpieces. So David and I, man, we, we talk a lot. We talk a lot about Jesus with you guys. And so that's kind of our function. But sometimes we can morph and we can be Jesus' hands. There are some people who are Jesus' hands. Um, right now, uh, our state of things right now is really odd, but there's a lot of service happening. There's a lot of people who are loving others through service by delivering groceries, by uh, there's going to be the, the egg hunt that's going to happen here um, that actually probably did happen this last week. Uh, and, and there's all kinds of things that are happening where our church is stepping up and there's people who are serving others and loving on others that way. That's Jesus' hands. And when you think about like, let's say Jesus' feet, think about those who are missionaries out in um, complete different parts of the world who are out there preaching the gospel. Um, they are taking the gospel of Jesus Christ and they're taking it across uh, nation lines, across continents to the people who need it the most. And guys, uh, not everybody has like, you know, one grand gift. We all have different gifts and abilities that God's blessed us with. Um, and we're supposed to use them. And so um, in our show notes here, guys, I want you guys to understand, you know, we, we get it. Not everybody knows, like, what am I supposed to do? What Where do I fit into all that? Yeah. That's okay. Like, we we didn't know at first. We had to figure that out. And so we want to help you guys figure that out, um, where your gifts and abilities lie. And so we're going to attach some different tests for you guys so that you can kind of um, scroll through and figure out, like, what God has gifted you with so that you can be part of this body of Christ, to be part of this movement um, to see the kingdom of God here on earth. And if we're going to sum up these three parts, the mission, the method, the movement, if we're going to sum them up, then I, th I think what we need to do is we need to understand that that movement that we have, those actions that we do, that, that our faith is, is drawn out of us, not like a, a forced thing that we try to do to accomplish because we want to get the approval from God. Like he already approves of you. That's not what it's about. But if, if we want our faith in the fact of the resurrection of Christ to impact our actions, then our movement must be in line with our mission. The things that we do, the things that we say, the way that we talk to our neighbors, the way that we serve and love other people, those things must be in line with the mission of Christ. And, and if those things must be in line with the mission of Christ, then that means that whatever is outside of that triangle, whatever is outside of the mission of Christ is wrong. And, and it's hard to say that because I like, I don't do that right every time, right? Like we, I don't, I miss that often. And, but our goal, what we should strive to do is that everything that we do should be in line with our mission of Christ. It should be in line with bringing people to Jesus. And that's why part of the reason why what we talked about last week, all the things that, that we try, whether it's um, money or family or status, any of those things, they could be good, but if they don't line up with the mission of Christ, we're missing the point of it all. If we value our status over Jesus, it's wrong. If we use our status for our own good rather than using it for the good of Jesus Christ and his mission, then we've missed it. If we value our money more than our mission, then we've missed it. Our mission is constant. Our methods can change based on the circumstances and where we're at. And our movement is always in line with all of it. Let me pray for you guys. Jesus, we love you. God, we are so grateful for your resurrection power. God, that you, you have raised yourself from the dead, that you, you have freed us from the bondage of sin and slavery and death and all of these things. And Lord, now in our hearts, God, draw out a faith that moves us to action, God, that, that our lives would be different because we know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you have 
been risen from the dead and that you have given us new life. And God, you want that life for every single one of our friends. Lord, help us to share that with the people around us, starting with our neighbors and ending around the world. God, we love you. We pray these things in your name. Amen. Amen. Well, we hope you guys really enjoyed that time that we spent in the Word together and just uh, making us look, watching us make fools of each other. Um, but we ultimately, guys, um, wish you a happy Easter and Easter. Yeah, we are so uh, thankful for um, Jesus and what He's done. And guys, there is so much to be celebrating because of what He did by rising out of the grave. So we love you guys so much. We will catch you guys very soon. Yep.